So now that we have all the formulas listed, let's look at all the other pieces of information we want to remember about sample size. And the first bit is the part I've already been alluding to, that they all use the same critical value, which is z alpha over 2. Now, z alpha over 2 uses a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. And we use um, stat calculators normal, and we click between. Those instructions are also in your exam notes packet, but there they are as well. Just so you can see it, it's back a couple pages. It's right here. Stat, calculators, normal, click between, always, always, always use 0 and 1 to find it, and you enter your C level over to the right of the equal sign. I'll just make a note. Enter C level to the right of the equal sign. These ones are, these sample size in general, are weird because we always, always, always round up to the nearest whole number. The rest of the course, literally every other problem, we do regular rounding, right? Five and higher goes up, four and lower stays the same, and you just cut off all the decimals. But you know, the, the normal rounding that we've all learned in school. But these ones must go up, no matter what. Now, one other piece, and I think it's a little subtle, so I'm, I might add this into the exam notes packet just so you guys can all see it. But the sample size questions for proportions, like these two at the top, and these two at the bottom, it is very common for the error to be given as a percent, and then you have to change it to a decimal. That is not the case for the middle one. So you'll notice that that caution there about margin of error is not given. As a matter of fact, it says, do not modify the margin of error given. I even wrote it as a note. <laughs> so that, um, in proportion problems, the given percentage error, change it into a decimal. So let me give you a little example over here so we can all see it. So if they say, and then how do you know the error? Actually, let me put that in there. The key is the word within, right? That's your error, within this much, right? Because error, of course, is that width that we get in a confidence interval. And so you're trying to keep it within, right, between certain values, right? So if you think of your confidence interval, right, within these two. So you're trying to keep it there. So seeing that word within, so if I say within, uh, I don't know, 4.2%, then you make that error, which was 4.2%. So the thing about percents is they're great for how we speak about math, but they're not great for formulas. <laughs> so you have to, they're bad <laughs> for formulas, in fact. So you have to move the decimal two spots over and make it 0, 4, 2, right? So you're taking that decimal and you're swinging it one, two spots over. But we want to make sure we note that this is only for proportion problems, right? Do not do this for the mean problem. I'll just say for the third formula using S, right? Because that's what makes that formula special, is that it uses the standard deviation. So do not change this um, error given to a decimal. Don't move the decimal places in it, right? You only do that for percents, because percents are actually not useful in mathematics. They're useful for talking about mathematics, but they're not useful for formulas. So you have to change it to a decimal. All right, now one other thing that's weird about sample size questions and it can make them hard to spot on the final, is when you know that you're doing one. I think that's one of the keys. So 
you want to be aware because the word confidence and actually confidence and constructing a confidence interval will appear in these problems, but it doesn't want you to make a confidence interval. It wants to know how many, what sample size. And I wrote those up here. How many, what sample size? So you can also see the words um, how big, right? How big a group, how, um, how much. Right, etc. So you've got to look for the question words. That's basically what it's telling you down, more, down below. You've got to look for the question words because if it's asking you to make a confidence interval, great, then that's the previous flow chart. But if it's asking you what sample size do I need to make a, a confidence interval, well that's a different question. That's a sample size question. So look for those question words. Be warned. These can be tricky to spot sometimes. All right, last but not least, as with confidence intervals, um, there are some relationships we want to keep in mind. And they're kind of a variation on one, well, this one in particular is one we already learned a previous page, in that there's an inverse relationship between sample size and error. And there's a direct relationship between sample size and confidence and a direct relationship between standard deviation and sample size. Now, you might be thinking, well, did we already do those? No, actually. So the previous page is all about error, right? So if you look at the flow chart for confidence intervals, it's talking about error, 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 right? These three are all about the error because it's about confidence intervals. It's about the narrower, wider thing. Whereas this one is all about sample size, right? How does sample size bear on these things? So if error goes up, sample size goes down, or if error goes down, sample size goes up. I don't know why I put an extra comma there. Um, C level has a direct relationship. So if the C level goes down, the sample size goes down or if C level goes up, sample size goes up, that's a direct relationship. And then if S goes down, N goes down, or if S goes up, N goes up. One other thing of note for these pieces is confidence. We can have high levels of confidence, but we can never have 100% confidence. So I'm just going to add that piece down here. I might make a blank for this <laughs> in future. So. Right, we have very high confidence levels a lot of the time. So for example, we've dealt with 90%, 95%, 99%, etc. But it can never be hundred percent. Never, never, never. Because that would imply we surveyed or knew everything about the whole population. And that's not true for us. Not when we're doing these types of inferential statistics. If you have every the whole population, then you're not inferring anymore. Then you're just describing, right? We'd be in descriptive statistics, which is the first portions of the course, not the last piece. <laughs> 